Hey there, just wanted to do a quick video about the upgrades I've made to my ANET A8. This is the first uh, 3D printer I've had. I got started with it and I've done a lot of upgrades to it and it's one of the best printers that you can get just to get started in a 3D printing. As you know, I'm a miser. I don't like spending any money. I wasn't about to buy a five, six hundred dollar printer already made. Plus, I'm an engineer. I'm a tinkerer. I like to build things. So I wanted to go with the kit. It's real cheap. Uh, about the time I got it, it's about $160 roughly. So it's such a great deal just to get started into it. Plus, you're learning a lot about how to build 3D printers and how they work exactly, which is perfect for when you have any kind of problems with it and you need to fix it or you want to make upgrades. And that way it's economical as well. You're learning along the way and then you can upgrade it as you can afford to buy more parts for it. So anyway, this is where I am right now with all the upgrades that I've made for my ANET A8. Let's go. Okay, so here we have the ANET A8 in its current state with the upgrades that I've done. I'll just kind of do a quick review of, of everything. Uh, obviously, as you see, I've got it in an enclosure right now. Uh, I built this with just stuff I had laying around because I didn't want to have to go buying a lot of stuff. Uh, so it's just a cardboard cut out from a TV that we got several years ago. It was just a big box that I had, so I just used that for the sides. The uh, main reason I did this enclosure is because um, I didn't want to keep breathing in the fumes. I don't do a lot of printing with ABS or anything else that where it could be an issue with toxicity. But um, even the PLA, uh, it was kind of smelling a little bit. Um, some of the PLAs I use, I, I usually just get cheap ones. And some of them didn't smell so good, so it was nice to close it in. I, put a vent back here it's basically just a PC cooling fan uh, with some coupling there and some screening <coughs> in there and it uh, goes through PVC and ventilates outside um, so that works real good I added some uh, real bright LED strips in here I tried several different versions some colored ones and things like that so I could do some cool coloring effects and I wanted to have it set up to where uh, I could connect it directly to the controller board and have the lights controlled uh, different colors when certain things happen with the print but they weren't very bright so I ended up opting just for some super bright LEDs for now um, to give plenty of light so it looks good and it's fine for now um, as you can see I've added glass to the heat bed this has been a big upgrade for me I'll probably do another video on why it's good to go with glass but I can't uh, emphasize how good that has been. I've added a um, BL Touch sensor. It's actually a clone um, for auto bed leveling, and it also replaces the Z axis uh, uh, stop switch. So I only have the uh, X end stop and the Y end stop, no Z, Z end stop. I've upgraded to a Bowden setup as you can see. I've got another video about that, um, talking about the Bowden setup and why, and that's that's a great upgrade. That's one of the first ones I recommend doing. Um, it makes the printing go a bit quicker because you don't have all that weight on the carriage that can slow down the printing, uh, so you can print a lot faster. So that's a, one thing I've done. Uh, I've got an E3D V6 clone on there, also a Volcano heating block. I uh, put some more framing on here, mainly on the front here to give it a little more stability for the Y-axis. I've added these little, uh, I don't remember what you call them, but these little caps in there to hold the Z threaded rods a little more stable so you don't have Z banding so much, Z wobble. So that clears that up quite a bit. I've had this camera here from the beginning. It's just an old Logitech camera that I had laying around. So I've added that here. I put this PVC in the paint it or something like that but I put the PVC just to hold it where it kind of clears up the, the table a little bit have that going into an octoprint I'll show you that in a little bit into a Raspberry Pi 
So that's kind of the basic printer set. I've cleaned up a lot of the wiring and so forth. Oh, let's see. I also, I added some extra wires. Uh, you can't see it here because I ran them all up through here now. Um, oh, another thing I did is I soldered the wires directly on. I did have an issue where the connector that they gave, uh, with it not being soldered directly on all the back and forth, it's not making the greatest connection and it ended up burning out one of the main leads there. And so I've soldered them directly on. Okay, so that's kind of the inside of the printer. Let's go to the top of the enclosure. Oh, obviously I have a, um, a cover for this. I'll go ahead and put it on. That way it seals it from the fumes. Also, it makes it quieter because I work in here as well. So I'm sitting here next to the printer pretty much all day long. So this keeps it quieter as well when it's printing because I'm usually printing all the time. I almost hate to leave the printer not running something when I can use it for productivity. Uh, so this is just plexiglass I put on here. It was only 15 bucks. I didn't want to spend a lot uh, enclosing the entire enclosure with plexiglass. So I just did the uh, front here. And I had some uh, business card magnets here. And so I just used some of those and fastened them to the enclosure and to the plexiglass to make it real easy to take on and off works really 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 good i like it better than a door because the door would get in the way depending on which way i had it swing and so this way i can just take the whole thing off and i think it works really good now uh, like i said this is just um stuff i had laying around this piece here is just some wood laminate flooring that i had laying around use that i already had this wood for the top and for the legs just cut it so that really didn't cost me anything because i already had it so it worked really good so here's the, the all the electronics that i have i just kind of moved them all up to the top it's a little junky up here but that's that's how the way things are when you're working on building stuff all the time um, so here's the display obviously i've moved it from the inside printed out this uh, case for it fastened it down to the bottom also got this um, multimeter basically uh, this one is just going to the hot end so I can tell exactly how many amps it's pulling what kind of voltage it's at the, the power and overall energy that it's it's using I've got another one here in this box another one of these um, multimeter things I'm gonna use for just the hot bed uh, they go through this shunt so that you can it can uh, measure the current. So anyway, it's nice, very inexpensive to do. I've also got a thermometer on there. Um, this over here is actually the temperature inside the enclosure, and this is outside the enclosure. So you see, it's about three degrees cooler on the inside of the enclosure than the outside. Right now, nothing's running. Um, but since you've got that vent there that's uh, sucking everything out, it's cooling it down a bit, so it's a bit cooler. And then when it's printing, it ends up being about 3 degrees warmer, which is good too. So, there's a lot of advantages in that. Anyway, this, this gives me a way to monitor that. I added a uh, power switch with a fuse, which is very important uh, for safety as well as um, just to make it easier. I did have this mounted on the side of the printer when I originally did it, uh, like so many people do. But then when I converted it to here, I just put it up here. It's not mounted very permanently right now. I need to fix that a little bit better. But we've still got the switch there and the fuse that helps it. Of course, we've got this, the power supply mounted. This is just the one that came with it, the standard one. Um, a lot of people upgrade to it. I, I might upgrade uh, to a higher higher power one soon as well but um, I haven't had any issues at all and I run my hot bed at 60 degrees pretty much all the time uh, so it's constantly on and I have not had any problems with it whatsoever I did add the MOSFETs as you can see here got uh, this MOSFET here is for the hot end and this MOSFET here is for the hot bed so those are good for safety reasons and then, of course, there's the main ANET A8 controller board. 
Here is my Raspberry Pi 3, which I run Octoprint on. That's one of the best upgrades you can do for any printer, is run an Octoprint. It makes things a lot easier. I can, um, I just, I use Cura to slice anything if I need to, or, you know, change the positioning and things like that. And um, then I just upload them directly to Octoprint and print them from there. So it makes it really easy. Uh, I'm not having to have a dedicated PC or computer hooked up to it because Octoprint and the Raspberry Pi right there, that is the computer that's connected to it. So it makes it real nice and easy and then I can monitor it anywhere. Um, I also monitor it from my phone when I'm away and um, works really good. I do have a uh, kill switch. I have not installed it yet. I do have that though where I can remotely kill it. I just have not installed that yet. Plus I'm here practically all the time anyway. So let's see, uh, those are the main upgrades. Um, as far as filament and stuff, I built this uh, dry box to store all my filament in. Uh, works real good. Let me turn this light off here, see if that's... There we go. I've got another video on the dry box if you want to see how I built that. Uh, but it's really good for storing the filament in and easily uh, feeding it into the printer, into the Bowden setup. Uh, it's not really airtight, so it's not perfect. It's um, you know it's, it doesn't have a seal on it really, but it still keeps it plenty dry. So I'm not too worried about it right now. Um, anyway, it works good. So that's pretty much a tour of the upgrades that I have done so far. I've got plenty more in mind. Um, Oh, and I don't remember if I mentioned the BL Touch. It's a clone uh, for the Z axis and for auto leveling. And that works great. I can't recommend the touch sensor enough, especially if you're running glass because the inductive sensors, they can tend to have problems with um, glass on there. They, they don't uh, sense the metal. Uh, real well and it, also the temperature can affect when the inductive sensors uh, are trying to sense the, the build plate. So I like the actual touch sensor. It works great. Um, you have to kind of do things a little different on the configuration when you're wiring up to the ANA8. It's not like a straightforward wiring but it works the way it's done. Um, so anyway that worked good. Have to um, tweak the firmware to get that to work, but once you got it all set up, it works great. So that is my ANET A8 with all the upgrades so far. It's an awesome printer. I can't recommend it more highly, especially getting started. And it, it even, uh, I mean, it's a workhorse. You can print all kinds of things with it, even high quality things. You don't have to spend hundreds and hundreds of dollars or thousands of dollars to get good quality prints. So that's it, my ANET A8. Hey, if you like these videos, please subscribe, like the video, and share it with your friends. It'll help me out a whole lot. I love producing this information, and I just want to spread it around so I can get a bunch of feedback, and that gives me more content that I can produce even more videos that you like. So, subscribe, like, share, and happy making!